If you're not familiar with her story, you gotta go read about her. You gotta go watch all the movies about her. Um, she was truly a pioneer. On June 23rd, 1972, Title IX went into effect. It's a federal law. I'm gonna read it to you. Wanna get all the words right. No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any educational program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Now what this meant for athletics, girls had to have the same opportunities as boys. I remember in elementary school, I think, asking my mom what sport she played in high school. And she was like, oh, well, I didn't, because we couldn't. And it just drove home how recent it was that people were forced to take women's sports seriously. So I thought in honor of this date that I would go through some of the women athletes who have inspired me and honestly are kind of the reason that I do this. We talk a lot about how Serena Williams is the greatest of all time, not just in tennis, but like any athlete ever, which very fair. But I want to talk about Venus for a second. In 2002, Venus Williams became the first black woman to reach the number one ranking in the Open Era. She's played in 85 Grand Slams, which is more than literally anyone on this planet. She's won seven of them. She is one of two active players to reach the finals of every Grand Slam. The other is Serena. And she's the only tennis player to medal in four Olympic Games. But something that I've always found really inspiring about Venus is how she and Serena support each other. And, you know, Serena might have more titles, but Venus is an incredible athlete in her own right. And whenever she takes a court with her sister, there is this overwhelming feeling of support and camaraderie. And I think that's really cool. There's no way that I'm gonna be able to do Wilma Rudolph, even an iota of, of justice in this little blurb in a video, but I've been thinking about her so much recently. In 1960, she became the first American woman to win three gold medals in track and field at an Olympics. She smashed world records, she smashed Olympic records, and then she retired. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna go out on top. And this was only eight years after she won her battle with polio, which left her barely able to walk, let alone run. Obviously her story has inspired so many books, so many movies, but she was really involved in the civil rights movement after her athletic career. Um, and I've been thinking about that so much as we've seen so many athletes use their platforms to support the Black Lives Matter movement, to go to protests. She went to protests. Um, and she was doing this 60 years ago. Uh, I like to think that public opinion is shifting to the right side of history. Um, and it was very, very much farther behind where we are now when Wilma was doing this. So if you're not familiar with her story, you gotta go read about her. You gotta go watch all the movies about her. Um, she was truly a pioneer. When she was reporting on the 2004 Olympics in Athens, Mary Carrillo, who had been a great tennis player turned broadcaster, delivered the most unbelievably funny rant about badminton I've ever heard, about getting the little birdie stuck in the trees and getting all the equipment out of your garage to try to get it down. And this was really inspiring to me because it was one of the first times that I had seen a woman on a national live television be really, really funny about sports. And I think that sort of cracked it open for me. I was like, oh my God, there's room for this. We can do this. Mary's obviously a very accomplished journalist. She's won tons of awards. She's made documentaries. She's, she's done really incredible work. But the first time I saw that rant, I was just like, oh man, the world is our oyster. This might sound a little strange, but bear with me for a second. Um, I don't think we talk enough about how beautiful sports can be like graceful, you, like like physically watching people do the most gorgeous movements with their bodies. And Michelle Kwan was one of the first people who showed me how true that can be. I remember being stunned at the grace with which she performed. Feats of strength and all of the ways that people defy the rules of physics, which we're about to talk about Simone Biles, so you'll see that soon. Um, but there was something just so purely stunning about the way Michelle skated. Um, and it's it's stuck with me. Sometimes when, sometimes when I'm having a bad day, I just go like watch her YouTube highlights. 
it, try it. it. It'll probably make you feel a little bit better. So I said a second ago that Simone Biles defies the laws of physics. She does. The woman can bend space and time. Um, she can jump higher, spin faster. She does things that you don't think could be physically possible. And there is such wonder and delight in watching that. I think it's really common when we talk about people who've inspired us or who've shown us what's possible to focus on the people we looked up to when we were younger, as I have done for most of this video. But Simone reminds me that not only is it possible, it's very important to be inspired by people younger than you are. Um, and it kind of makes you excited to see what's gonna come next. Whenever anyone asks me my favorite sports memory, it's very easy because it is hands down the US women winning the World Cup in 1999. I watched with my entire fourth grade travel soccer team um, and I think I started the game sitting on a couch and by the time Brandi Chastain scored that goal and ripped off her shirt, we all went nuts. And I think I was actually standing, like ended it standing up behind me. Um, we immediately ran outside, played a game of soccer and I remember feeling kind of like I could fly. Like there was this feeling underneath my rib cage of infinite possibility. It was one of the first times that I'd seen women's sports on TV outside of the Olympics, and I could tell there was something special about this. Like, there were people who looked like me on the greatest stage doing incredible things, and it's been really cool over the past few years, in 2015, in 2019, to watch the US women do this again and know that there are little girls watching who probably had that same experience. For the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.